You're watching NCTV, celebrating 20 years of community broadcasting. Welcome to the Food and Farm Show. I'm Bianca Cruz Manafort. And I'm Gil Dominguez. Today we're coming to you from the 57th annual Penn Valley Rodeo. A great tradition here in Penn Valley, or as they call it locally, Pentucky. And Bianca, it doesn't get any better than a rodeo on a Saturday night. It sure doesn't. In our hometown, our beautiful Nevada County, this is really the place to be this weekend. Um, our first thing we're going to talk about today is we're going to have Dave Murdoch from the Four Star Rodeo Company talking to us about all the bucking animals here. Yeah, and really, what's the difference between a cow that we're raising to eat and, and the bulls and cows that we see here that they're uh, roping and, and wrestling? And then later in the show, we're going to go back to Blag Livestock Dairy Heifers and have a great uh, informational story on pasture irrigation, Bianca, and, and I found that fascinating. It sure was, Gil. Um, we really got to see the different conservation techniques that um, Mike Blag uh, is using to irrigate his property to feed his grass-fed heifers, and uh, it's very informational. I think you'll enjoy it. So be sure to join us every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock on NCTV Channel 11, Sunlink Channel 16, and of course, anytime you want to on our YouTube channel, it's the Food and Farm Show on YouTube. So let's go, let's get ready to cowboy up, buckle up, put those seat belts right there on your easy chair as we dive into the Penn Valley Rodeo and head out to Blag Livestock. You're watching the, the Food, Food and Farm, Farm Show. Show. Nevada County Farm Supply has been part of the agricultural scene since 1993. Their staff consists of a certified crop advisor, licensed pest control advisor, and irrigation auditor. In Penn Valley, they have a full service nursery with over 500 varieties of plants and garden enhancements. In Grass Valley, they have a warehouse full of soil amendments, fertilizers, and nutrients. Nevada County Farm Supply, powerful knowledge and innovative solutions. Anything Green Hydroponics is your source for hydro systems, grow lights, and soils. Anything Green offers a complete range of organic nutrients as well as fungicides, miticides, and predatory bugs. Anything Green Hydroponics has just received this year's soil. Get your totes, pallets, or individual bags. Stay tuned for future workshops. It's all at Anything Green Hydroponics. On election day, District 4 selects a new supervisor. We deserve a leader with proven skills and a proactive approach to government. I'm Fran Cole. I'm a business lawyer and community leader with management experience. As your supervisor, I'll support job growth protect our scenic beauty, and properly manage our forest from wildfires. I believe in finding innovative solutions to our problems. A vote for me is a vote for Nevada County. Welcome back to the Food and Farm Show. Today I'm joined by Dave Murdoch of the Four Star Rodeo Company, who is the stock contractor for the Penn Valley Rodeo today. Welcome to the show, Dave. Thanks for having me. Nice to meet you. Now, can you tell me a little bit about what your role is here, um, working with these animals in the rodeo? Uh, basically, my role here, um, I work with the owner of these animals, Jeff Davis, who owns Four Star Rodeo Company, and uh, basically my job is to work with him to manage these animals, um, keep them healthy, keep them happy, keep them bucking, going down the road. Now, you've worked uh, this rodeo before, or is this your first time at the Penn Valley Rodeo? This would be, I believe, my third year here. Your third year here. And the, this um, company actually originates from Cottonwood, is that correct? Yeah, we're out of Northern California, Cottonwood. And how many rodeos uh, would you estimate that you do or your supply animals for? Um, I would probably say we're right around 40 to 50 rodeos a year. Um, anywhere from being the primary contractor to subbing for other contractors that, that need more animals at the rodeos. Now, what kind of stock did you bring here today? Can you tell us a little bit about uh, the different animals we have? Um, we actually supply um, all different kind of aspects of stock for the rodeo, anywhere from the timed event cattle, which is uh, the Coriani breed, to um, your, your rope and tie down calves, um, which those are, it can be a mixed breed of Coriani to beef calves. Um, and then when it comes to the bucking bulls, um, they're more of a Bramer cross. They have more of a, the, the Bramer influence in them, which Gives them a little bit more of the attitude. It's it's more for the athletic ability, the body type, 
um, because we're breeding them to perform. We're not necessarily going for a carcass yield on on these animals, but um, mostly it's, we're, we're breeding for looks, how they're put together, attitude, athletic ability. I noticed a lot of these bulls have really flashy coat patterns. Could you contribute that to maybe like some dairy influence or some um, exotic like Brahma influence? Is that kind of what you're describing? Yeah, you're going to get that. Um, I mean, they, they could have a unless you can go back and trace every single animal that they came out of. It, I mean, it's it's hard to tell exactly what they are, but um, they've done a lot more, a lot more work with genetics and um, being able to trace it back and being able to register these animals now when 20 years ago they weren't they didn't quite have the technology for that right right and do they get to breed other bucking animals uh, to kind of carry on the, t the tradition yeah we um it's just as important to have a good mare as it is to have a good stud and i only th think it mm -hmm. falls more on the mare than it does the stud but you want to when it comes to our horses you try to breed a horse if you have really hot-blooded mares mm -hmm. you want to try to breed a kind of a colder blooded stallion to them because kind we of try to get it, out yeah we try to get them to survive as long as we can <laughs> and if you don't have any brains in them they can sure. almost they can almost be a danger to themselves and so when we're, we're dealing with them in these kind of setups um some facilities are better than others and you really need them to kind of slow down and think and handle well so for your safety and for their own safety sure, sure. now do you think these animals know when they've actually done a good job when they've bucked um a lot and they get a lot of applause do you think they actually can tell oh it's it's just as much of a game to them as it is to to, to the contestants um they know it, they get they get nervous they get amped up just like the cowboys do now can you tell me a little bit about their life back on the ranch when they're actually not bucking they i mean people talk about possibly that we're, we're hard on our rodeo animals mm -hmm. they have more of a natural lifestyle of a horse and a bull than than say half the contestants going down the road that their horses are in stalls all the time being sure. trailered all over the place yeah these animals they do have to take hauling i mean we, we travel quite a bit um but when they get home to the ranch i mean they have hundreds and hundreds of acres to just go be horses so they're they turned out all together on the free range and experience yes. that lifestyle yes. when they're not working which is great that probably helps them um be more uh, excited about getting back to work when they actually are taken to the rodeo. So that's great. That's great. I know you guys take really good care of your animals. Well, thank you. It shows. It shows. Yeah, no. Uh, a lot of these horses, I mean, they've been in, I mean, they've been a part of this rodeo company their whole life. And, I mean, we've got a horse over here that's, he's 24 years old and still wow. going down the road. Still bucking. And, he, I mean, I wish I'd, we had 100 more like him. But um, they become a part of the family. Sure, sure. I mean, they're, they're our livelihood. They, if we don't take care of them, they're not going to take care of us. Now, can you show me your favorite bull here and why exactly you like him? My favorite bull, actually, he's over there in the corner. Uh, his number's 42, buckle up. He's been in the NFR a couple times. Um, we have to keep him by himself because he kind of likes to cause problems with the other ones, but <laughs> the only problem is is he's not very tough. <laughs> so we keep him over there, but um, and we kind of have to keep him away because he'll fight through the fence with them and whatnot. They have their own pecking order. I mean... And any just like animal, any other herd animal, yeah, right? Yeah, any herd animal, they have their pecking order. Um, but, no, he, I can walk in there with him, scratch him, pet him. He handles good, and he's he's 10 years old, which that's actually pretty old for a buck and bull. Um, that's pretty much when they're getting kind of the, the end of their career. Of their career. And, uh, no, he's, I, he's a great bull to have. He's easy to be around um, and still bucks really, really hard. Now, you mentioned the NFR. For those um, of our viewers who do not know what the NFR stands for, can you explain to us what the NFR is? Uh, that's the Wrangler National Finals Rodeo. That's held in Las Vegas in December, and that's for the top 15 contestants in the world, and that goes off money one throughout the whole rodeo season. So. Now, what would be your top earning animal if you could kind of pick one out of here, and if you could kind of give us an idea of actually how much money the animal has, has earned for you in rodeos? Um, probably uh, the top money earning animal here would be... Uh, buckle up over there buckle up the bull mm -hmm. he goes to the finals and th and that's the thing when the contest the top 15 in the world get to go to the nfr well before to pick the animals they they compete on all top 15 contestants vote on the animals they want to come there so it's it's kind of a pre prestigious deal so it's like get, a popularity contest for these little bulls, bit little bit animals. but they they're voting on 
animals they know they can they're voting for the best animals out there they and get they get the highest scores mm -hmm. and they're picking from over 60 to 70 contractors in the united states well that's that's a great honor for you to actually have a bull that um is that prestigious to be in the nfr for you guys yeah no it's 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 an exciting deal and we, we darn sure do it for the love of it because uh not a lot of people are getting rich in this game thanks for joining us today on the food and farm show dave thanks for having me i appreciate it all right, we're going to have a great rodeo today, so let's join Gil on the other side of the arena. Thanks a lot, Bianca. I am over at the other side of the rodeo grounds, and as you can hear, the band is playing in the background, and I am in one of the best places of all, and that's the pie booth, where you come and get those delicious pies down here. And with me is Kathy Clemo. Kathy, thanks a lot for being on the Food and Farm Show. Oh, thank you for having us. Now, uh, tell us a little bit about the pie booth, how it got started. Um, the Pie Booth is a benefit for Care Crisis Nursery up in Nevada City, and we were asked by the Penn Valley Roadie Association many years ago to come down with our fresh homemade pies. All of our pies are made by local women with local grown fruit, and then they're baked um, by local uh, another group of local women as we need them f during the three days of the rodeo. Three days. So in three days, how many pies are we pushing out of this place? Between 125 and 150 pies. Wow. 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 And these are all homemade pies right here in Nevada County. Uh, you know, just a, a really great uh, collection of pies, too. Let's just go over a couple of few of them. Um, we have apple, which is a number one big seller. We have strawberry rhubarb. This year we have rhubarb mixed with a variety of different fruits. We also have peach, raspberry, uh, blueberry, a delicious mixed berry, which consists of three different berries, um, as well as a whole lot of other variety of fresh fruit pies. Now, all the proceeds are going to the Care Crisis Nursery. Uh, let's do a little bit of plug about them and the important work they do in our community. Care Crisis Nursery is a respite care nursery for folks that are in need of a little time away, maybe because of a challenging situation that has arisen in your family. And Care Crisis strives to help prevent child abuse. You know, we all get a little stressed out with those children. And, you know, when bad times fall upon us, being able to leave the child for a few hours or even overnight, those are the services that we provide. We also work with... Uh, the county to do safe exchanges for divorced parents and that who have to exchange their children as well. Well, thank you so much, Kathy, for letting us come in and take a peek behind the curtain here uh, and see all the pies. Well, thank you for coming in and uh, checking us out. And uh, we hope to share our pies with all the rodeo fans over the next couple of days. Thank you. Always a big popular place. You got to get here early if you want a pie. If you wait like me till the end of Saturday night, they're all gone. You're going to have pie when you get home. All right, so let's uh, get ready for our second break of the day. When we come back, it's off to the Blag Livestock Dairy Heifer segment with Bianca Cruz Manafort. You're watching the Food and Farm Show. Nevada County Farm Supply has been part of the agricultural scene since 1993. Their staff consists of a certified crop advisor, licensed pest control advisor, and irrigation auditor. In Penn Valley, they have a full-service nursery with over 500 varieties of plants and garden enhancements. In Grass Valley, they have a warehouse full of soil amendments, fertilizers, and nutrients. Nevada County Farm Supply. Powerful knowledge and innovative solutions. Anything Green Hydroponics is your source for hydro systems, grow lights, and soils. Anything Green offers a complete range of organic nutrients as well as fungicides, miticides, and predatory bugs. Anything Green Hydroponics has just received this year's soil. Get your totes, pallets, or individual bags. Stay tuned for future workshops. It's all at Anything Green Hydroponics. On election day, District 4 selects a new supervisor. We deserve a leader with proven skills and a proactive approach to government. I'm Fran Cole. I'm a business lawyer and community leader with management experience. As your supervisor, I'll support job growth, protect our scenic beauty, and properly manage our forest from wildfires. I believe in finding innovative solutions to our problems. A vote for me is a vote for Nevada County's future. 
Welcome back to the Food and Farm Show. As you can see me, these horses are getting ready for the rodeo tonight, going through their warm-ups. Time for part two of the show as we head back out to Blag Livestock Dairy Heifers with Bianca Cruz Manafort. We are now so going, where are we going next? We are going out to the Hanneman Pasture. It's a, it's a little remote. It's about the first irrigation part starts about a mile from here. I'm going to go down to Gravel Road. Now we're on a different part of the ranch and we're going to focus on uh, one of the most important aspects of your operation. I know your heifers are grass fed and in order to produce grass you need water. So can you tell us a little bit about your irrigation system and how you deliver your water uh, to those pastures? Sure. We, are, we get our water from Nevada Irrigation District. The irrigation district suggests about a half inch of water per acre. We irrigate, on this ranch, we irrigate 110 acres, so we purchase 55 inches. And we, we buy those in minor inches, which are a little bit different. It's 10 inches per foot on, on the way the water is measured. Uh, right now we're on the Hanneman Canal. I have 55 inches for a week on this Lower Wolf Hanneman. I've got nine boxes, 20 inch box, allows for 20 inches, minor inches of water to come out. You've got to change them. You have to keep after it and pay attention. Else, when it runs off the land, it runs right back down into Little Wolf Creek. I guess that's good for NID, but, but for us, it's gone. You know, once, it's, once it runs off the property, it's gone. It goes and it ends up in Camp Far West. So of this ranch, there's 1,200 acres total, 110 irrigated, the balance is native. So that keeps me from having to feed a lot of hay the heifers run on the native grass in the winter time. You know, it rains and it turns green. Hopefully it'll rain and turn green. And then the summertime, uh, it's about one to 10 ratio on irrigated to native grass. It'll take a, you know at least 100 acres on this 1,200 acre ranch to keep the number of heifers I have here. And this is where my bulls are also. The Jersey bulls are out here with the heifers. So we're on the lookout for the mean ones. I opened this box last night and I just have time to, I know about how long it'll take. Uh, it's been about 18 hours, mm -hmm. so I'm going to go close the box and sh show you how I do it. I'm just going to walk over and you'll see how I have to cut this water off so it doesn't waste tonight. Great. All right, we're ready to shut off the NID water here, so can you go ahead and tell us the procedure you're going to be doing, Mike? There's a plate that's got two ridges that keeps this metal in place. Got the T-handle. I've already measured off how much water I'm using. It's just about the third hole, I, you just get used to knowing how much water is going to come out. And all you got to do is push down. The pressure of this canal water goes against that plate and will stop the water from coming out. There's vir virtually none will come out now. And this is the lower wolf Hanneman and it'll service several ranches on down the way. So when it's time to turn off, I got to turn it off. So that the other ranches can get their share. Mm -hmm. Do you coordinate your schedules? Yeah, I, I have with the other this ranches? on each week. It'll be in a different place. This week, the lower Wolf Hanneman is on, and I'll take the 55 inches out of this canal till Saturday afternoon. And then starting Saturday morning, the same morning or afternoon, the upper Wolf Hanneman above the panes, above, up above the house and the barns will start. So I gotta have this all turned off by about two o'clock on, on Saturday. And you gotta be honest, you, have, you know, when you're paying for your water and everybody else is using it, you use what, only what you're entitled to. So we're out here every day, Close, turn it on, turn it off. So is the drought affecting your operation at all? It made, it made the heifers look pretty bad over the winter because it, when it didn't rain in the grass, the normal winter feed didn't come on, heifers look pretty rough. And since they don't buy much hay, they look really bad. But now with it greening up, everything is looking pretty good. So they're getting fat and happy again. They are. Happy cows. Happy heifers in Nevada County. So Mike, now we're on a different part of the ranch. Can you tell us uh, what we're looking at here? Well, we're over on the Wild Rock section of the ranch. Uh, and then we're looking at three Jersey Springers. A Jersey, she's close to two years old. She's, pre she's bred, which means she's pregnant. She's been either AI'd or bred to a Jersey, a live Jersey bull and I'll be taking them to a heifer auction tomorrow down in Oakdale, California, Farmer's Livestock Market. 
and these heifers are very they're close to calving this heifer over here on the left is probably within a week these two might be a month or so away and they'll I'll we'll put them in that trailer we'll load them up tomorrow and we'll go to the auction with them so when the uh, dairy farmer buys these heifers at auction what is he going to do with them once he gets them home he'll take them home and put them on uh, a dry cow or a transition ration he wants their rumen to be full as full as it can be but he doesn't want to add too much fat or protein to the diet to start with you don't want to have jerseys sometimes if, if they're fed too high of energy or ration can get milk fever or ketosis you know based on some other stuff but they're going to put them on a diet to just make sure their bellies are full get them totally and get everything functioning and get them used to being in a, in a total mixed ration environment they're on all they eat now is grass and I give them a little hay tonight to fill them up. Mm -hmm. So tomorrow, if, if they were only eating grass and I loaded them in the trailer, every, I, they would empty out completely in the trailer on the way down there. So I'm gonna try to pack them up a little bit tonight with some good, some high quality three grain hay and fill them up and I'll look, actually, if they're not totally full in the morning, I might wait a week on one of them to take a, cause you, they, you want their belly full and you want the udder to be filled out. Just, you, know, you want them in their Sunday clothes is what you want. Their is, Sunday vest. You want them in their Sunday vest, exactly. Now, are they sold individually or yes. as a group? Yes, they are. They'll, because these are three different quality level heifers. She's a lot smaller. She's closer up. Then I've got these two here. These are a little bit bigger heifer. They're not as far along. Three different kind of types. So they'll sell it individually. Now, what price per pound would you like to get for these uh, the, heifers here? Well, they, what on, on the little heifers, they are sold by the head, but you have to kind of figure out what the pound, the, what the price per pound is. Mm -hmm. Last week, and then the, they they did really good. They range anywhere from 1850 to 2000 per head. Wow. So I, I don't I don't know if these heifers are that quality, mm -hmm. um, but it'll if they weighed 800 and they bring 1800 dollars, you know, they're still gonna it'll be over 1500 bucks a piece. Wow. Wow. What would your profit margin be on a on a Springer heifer like this um, at the end of her? Uh, time that she spent on your ranch and you've been well, breeding her the whole time? Well, my co right now with the market, um, gross margins are in, a, in an up market like this. That's the wonderful thing about Springers, and I preach mm -hmm. this to every 4-H child that wants to have a Springer or a dairy heifer uh, project. The, the profit margin, the gross margin, is should be somewhere, if it's not 75, it's probably 75% profit. Wow. On these, and so because you buy the heifer, feed them a little bit, and if they run on grass for a year and a half till they get bred, it's a wonderful project. And they go to a dairy and they turn into a milk cow. There's, they're not slaughtered, um, and they're healthy from being out here on the ranch. They last a long time. They're going to be those happy cows from California that you always see on the dairy commercials, the California dairy commercials. Happy heifers make happy cows. These are happy heifers out here. I can definitely see that. Now, Mike, I know you're one of the only people in Nevada County that uh, runs this type of uh, dairy heifer operation. Where do you see the future of this uh, market going once you're out of it or you're retired or uh, maybe 20, 30 years down the road? Where do you see it going? Well, let me say equity is one of the greatest motivators on earth. And when my son and daughter were involved in 4-H and FFA, they owned part of the business. They owned beef cattle mm -hmm. and then when they switched from beef cattle they switched over to dairy heifers and both Tyler and Kelsey still Tyler has heifers that he runs himself and AIs himself. Kelsey still has heifers here with me. I've got two successors that would just love to step in and take over for this. Also in the county every year it seems like I find some new young people that would like to have a heifer project as opposed to a market animal. And there's probably a good half dozen in Nevada County right now of young people in 4-H that are, have dairy heifer projects that I've helped, helped them start out. Okay. It's a wonderful feeling. It's more fun than winning money at a rodeo to, <laughs> to see the, a young 4-H member uh, sell a Springer and make money. Yeah, there's so much pride there to see those kids, you know, the hard work they put in, and their final reward at the end when they sell their animal. Now, for those people that aren't born into the business or don't have family members that can pass it on to them, how can we attract uh, youth and young farmers to come back here to Nevada County or this general area to do the kind of 
operation that you're doing? What can we do to, to try to attract and encourage the young people to continue the tradition? One of the first things that I, I truly believe in, in the value of 4-H, what it teaches and the leadership skills and, it, and just everything about 4-H. A lot of people don't care for it, mm -hmm. but as, as far as to get started in, in the ag business, I say join your local, a local chapter mm -hmm. or local club. Um, if, you can, if the kid can get, it, can get into FFA, if they're going to a high school that has FFA available, most of the stuff I learned about taking care of this place I picked up in high school and a couple years at, at, a, at a junior college. It, if, it takes a formal education to be very successful and to, get, to hit the ground running. Yes. It will be very helpful mm -hmm. to have a formal education in agriculture. Well, that's about all the time we have for this episode of the Food and Farm Show. As you can see, Bianca, the Penn Valley Rodeo Parade is coming through. It, it winds through Penn Valley and then ends up right here at the rodeo grounds. They have some really interesting entries. So this is really the hometown spirit that you really feel when you're here today by seeing all these wonderful folks from around and also the parade. So it's been a great day. It's all about community here in Penn Valley. and Nothing typifies that more than the Penn Valley rodeo 57th annual and 58th annual next year we'll be here for that one too you come back next week and see us on the food and farm show bye everybody bye Nevada County Farm Supply has been part of the agricultural scene since 1993. Their staff consists of a certified crop advisor, licensed pest control advisor, and irrigation auditor. In Penn Valley, they have a full service nursery with over 500 varieties of plants and garden enhancements. In Grass Valley, they have a warehouse full of soil amendments, fertilizers, and nutrients. Nevada County Farm Supply, powerful knowledge and innovative solutions. Anything Green Hydroponics is your source for hydro systems, grow lights, and soils. Anything Green offers a complete range of organic nutrients as well as fungicides, miticides, and predatory bugs. Anything Green Hydroponics has just received this year's soil. Get your totes, pallets, or individual bags. Stay tuned for future workshops. It's all at Anything Green Hydroponics.